we're going to have just an incredible show. This is this will be uh, from 400. Now we've done good shows before, but from 400 episode 400 to to this is 407 have just been an incredible string. Today will mark more excellence in that run of great shows. And here's the thing. I've gotten letters uh, this week. Letters. We've got letters. That's right, Daniel. Letters. <laughs> and so um, I had the a mailbag. F- mailbag. <laughs> mailbag. Had, had a fella who uh, alerted me to the volume issue. Super nice fella. Uh, and I appreciated it very much. Um, he said, hey, you sound great. I'm like, good. Looking good. Sounded good. You know, that's part of it. You know, yeah. putting on a good show. So we're off to a good start. Sure. That's uh, and a kudos to Zach for fixing that issue for me. Like obviously getting me to sit still. Second thing. Second thing, people are taking our work, the, you know, the videos that Hunter does, that Don does, that I do, and they're making money off of it. And we're here to empower individual investors. Like, we're, we're, of course, we want to, we would love it, Stock Nerds and Market Lovers, if everyone you knew, you sent to us. That's how we grow. It's all Great. word of mouth. We don't, sure. we don't pay to advertise. But uh, Daniel, this, um, this fella uh, said, hey, man, I've been watching the videos and I knew the action to take. He shorted some equities and uh, had himself had himself a day. Wow! And so I, that's that's great news. That, that means when you can take Hunter's information, Don's information, my information, and formulate it into your trading plan, I think that's great because it gives you more confidence in what we're talking about. And then when you tell your your loved ones, your family uh, about Revere Asset, it makes it all that more powerful. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But more importantly. Uh, well, I don't know what's more important, Danny's new shirt or what I'm about to get into. Danny walks in, not a Che Guevara. Hey, a, uh, first off, Guayavera, it's a nice shirt. Guayavera. It's a great for, shirt. For audio listeners, great shirt. So I, not, I, I my July 4th so shirt. Danny, good, Danny man. walks in and I'm like, my antenna go up. There's something new about Danny. Has Danny got a new haircut? Perhaps. Could be anything. Well, I did da- that had, too. Did Danny get Botox? <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 no. no. Did, what, what is new about Danny? Could be anything. And so I look at Danny's shirt and I'm like, that's a new color for Danny. That is, is it, is it pink? It's kind of a reddish. It's red. I like it's it. It's got some pink yeah, in it. The, uh, the I, I like the, the initials. So if Danny goes to camp, he knows that it's his shirt. I know who shirt. I am. Yes, yes. Right. I mean, I can your my, shirt you know, can't get yeah, lost to camp. I hold notes in my hand. Genuinely like that color on you. That's a yeah, good color for you. Yeah. It, from here in the light, in the studio lights, it almost looks like a purple. Yeah, but the, I don't think it the is. The lights are a little blue in here, so yes. I think it looks a little washed out on camera. But yeah, so, but, but we've got bigger issues afoot. We have been doing a disc- no, by the way, Stockners, when we're done with today's episode, let me just check on something real quick. I'm going to get into uh, some, de- some more demand destruction that I was uh, previewing on the video on Wednesday night. You can find that video, by the way, at revereasset.com. Tomorrow's insights uh, tab right here. And then uh, stocks will go lower if this commodity capitulates. We'll get into that here in a little bit. And we'll end up with targets for the S&Ps. Well, I'm going to. Uh, Don's going to enhance your your knowledge base with some stocks and Hunter's going to give you a watch. So all that good stuff that we get to, but more importantly, we need to discuss the topic du jour that's been discussed in the office. And that's the disclaimer. Yeah. We need to do a disclaimer at the beginning of the show. And you'll hear me say on my videos, stock nerds and market lovers, these videos are for what? Like I'm asking you a question and I'm, I'm quizzing you, what do you think these videos are for? And I'm saying for your edification purposes only. Then Dictionary Don comes up and says, four years ago, he says, dude, that's not a word. I'm like, dude, edification is totally a word. Now, a lot of words I say are not words, right? Like uh, extra. I never said it. <laughs> I, I was about to say Don would not say that edification is not a word. No, I ahead. swear there's a tape somewhere of this. Oh, yeah, you're gonna find that. <laughs> well, good. You know what? Funny you say that. We archive everything on our website. Never pull it down. And so, but I'm like, well, how do you fit this in here? Because like, if you guys have ever listened, you guys, you guys. If you guys have ever listened, use guys, use guys, <laughs> guys. If you guys have ever listened to radio, you know AM radio like, down here. It's y'all. Y'all, y'all, if y'all have ever listened to AM, Yins, if you're from Pennsylvania, um, Yins, oh yeah. Use, if you're use. from Jim Thorpe. Use. Yeah, use, use, use yeah, guys. Use good, yeah, yeah. Roof, not dog wolf. Crick. Roof, crick, yeah, there's a Crick's whole bunch a of that, yeah, oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh. I'm thinking about for educational and right, right, right. purposes only. Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking like, how do you work? Because if you listen to AM radio, like it sounds so lawyered up. Like when you hear the 
the disclaimer, like on a commercial, like really fast talk, really small print, you're like, oh, I'm about to get screwed, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like that's the, you, you expect Joe Azuzu. You guys remember Joe Azuzu? Well, yeah. Oh, first, oh, yeah. Joe, Joe Azuzu, right? Joe Azuzu, how do yeah. you spell that? I Z Z I Zuzu. Joe Azuzu. If you guys remember him, he would talk fast, and you were about to get screwed. <laughs> Ironically, Azuzu is not sold anymore in this country. Irony. And so, um, anyway, we do it a little bit. I S U Z U Zach. Suzu. Thank you, <laughs> spokesman. All right. Yes, yes, yes. We'll get Perfect. him on the on the show tile. Yeah, yeah. So um, I do it where I'm. I'm. Letting you know, hey, man, come on. This is common sense. I'm being very upfront with you. We're the only shop, by the way, that uh, does what we do and then talks about all the buying, all the selling. Like, and we focus specifically on the selling because that's what nobody does. They don't ever want to talk about, hey, we got out of this because of X, Y, and Z. You know, they only want to talk about their winners, Danny. They don't ever want to talk about selling, you know, like to, to, to minimize risk. And we do all that, 100% transparency here at Old. Revere Asset. But today... And what was that line that Bill O'Neill said to you? Oh, that's a great one. Anyone can get you into a stomp. Who can get you out? And then that, uh, really that, that illuminated my world, that, that one sentence uh, illuminated my world right in September, October, but wait, right before I went to Phoenix, Arizona to do my first talk ever. And then I realized what he meant based on how this group of people... The people reacted. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, what I'm about to show you Groundbreaking, I think earth shaking. Never been sold in this country before. And it requires a disclaimer. It's something so big, Daniel, that when the audience sees it, they're going to be floored. Not floored, floored. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm about to show you and the contents of this show are for what, Daniel? Edification purposes, educational purposes. Edification, Daniel. Come on. Never, ever to be misconstrued as advice. Because if this was advice, I would need you to lawyer up. This is not advice. What I'm about to show you is not advice. It's the opposite of advice. It's the opposite of advice. That's right. Matter of fact, it's a warning. <laughs> <laughs> if you want advice, reach out to me personally. Yes. Well, if you need advice, want advice, seek advice. I want to talk about your personal situation. Because maybe your parents are getting screwed by their personal advisor who has an office in the strip mall next to the vape shop. Because he, my friends, is a buy and hold. Or buy and bag holder. And if you want to talk to Danny. Pie and hold. Pie and hold. Pie and hold. Oh, my gosh. Pie and hold. Well, that sounds. Ooh, I like that. That's going to make the show. (laughs) Uh, Pie and hold. If you want to get a hold of Daniel. Dan at revereasset.com. Talk. Talk to Danny. Danny is America's fiduciary. And he picks up his phone. That little little button right down there. Like, you know, Tim, I don't. I'm listening on the Internet. What I need is for you to tell me how to get a hold of Danny and read the numbers. Done. So I've got you right here, my friends. It's a contact number. It's 855-732-5932. Okay. 855-REAL-WEALTH. Oh, yeah. 855-REAL-WEALTH. Hey, yeah. hey. Yeah, leave off the, one of those letters for the savings. <laughs> I forget which letter. It's, like, it's the last one. You yeah. just spell leave, it out. Dude. Leave off the H for savings. <laughs> and so that was the one. higher math. If you that was one 800 mattresses. Uh, uh, like, because mattress doesn't make the, the phone number correct. You know what I mean? Like, one eight hundred mattress. Leave off the S for savings. Anyway, so Since we strive for accuracy. It's actually L T H. You can leave off. <laughs> I'll, I will have something better than leave off the L T. I, I will think of something for next show. Every once in a while, when I'm when I'm doing the video, I say one eight hundred real wealth. But if you call now, you can save. Don't dial the L T H. Oh, that is funny. I do like that. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to adopt here. Some immediacy in it. Yeah, absolutely. But it it gives them it gives them sense of urgency. Now, again, fair warning. We've done the disclaimer. Do you agree, Daniel? Yes. Okay, great. This is going to be introduced at Taco Bell. Show my screen. This is a giant. It it's it's a tostada, Daniel, with a cheese it. I'd like a cheese it snack cracker, like a tiny little cheese it, right? Like a palm size. This it, is, one. I mean, the dimensions of this cheese it are jai freaking enormous. Mm-hmm. Never in the history of the world has mankind unleashed such a weapon against humanity as this giant cheese it infused with food from Taco Bell. Oh, it's junk food inside of junk food. 
Whoa, Daniel, that is judgmental. It's more than that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See the unicorn in the forest. That, that's exactly what it, it's Bigfoot and a unicorn made a child, <laughs> right. and it's a giant cheese it. Yeah. Like never in the history of mankind or Charmin toilet paper has anything been introduced so wickedly violent, potentially wickedly violent, if anybody your stomach handles this type of stuff. And so listen to me. This requires all the disclaimers in the world. I'm not saying I don't want one, because I do, but I don't eat carbs anymore, and I, I'd have to not have the giant cheese. But boy, am I jealous of this. This is amazing. It's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's yeah. got a good picture, but by the time you actually get it, it's not going. Oh, you look think like the that cheese is going to be soggy? <laughs> ah, Taco yes. Bell's nasty, man. Simple. Taco Bell's nasty. Don, I think Don likes Taco Bell. I'm not being facetious. I right? love their hot I, sauce. I like Taco Bell. Yeah. yeah so how, how how has the fast food industry not been sued for false advertising? Because never in the history of going into the store had you ever gotten anything that looks like the picture. That's well. That's that's not a single I, time, Dan, Don. I think someone has gotten sued. I'm not being funny. I think someone sued Burger, like one of the burger chains, recently because nothing they get looks like the commercial. Like a class action suit's been brought. I, if I would have good for them. <laughs> Where's Jackie yeah. Childs? We, we deserve yeah. better. Yeah, come on, Jackie Childs. So this is amazing, though. This is this is in 2022. This is what they call culinary innovation. Taco Bell's had a lot of success with their collaboration with Doritos. Doritos yeah, those Locos tacos. I heard they sold like 500 million of those first. Right, year. and that's Frito Lay. Yeah, now yeah. this opens up the door to Kellogg's. Yes. Kellogg's owns. And, uh, uh, it used to be Sunshine Bakers. Cheese, cheese, cheese. They own, Kellogg's right. now owns Cheeses. By the way, Kellogg's splitting off into three, three separate companies. companies. Well, and, one uh, of them is the snack company. Right. That's how they want to grow. This is a great way to grow. Yeah. Taco Bell's owned by Yum Brands. Yeah. I trade these things back and forth. But, who owns what anymore. dude, giant cheese it <sighs> My gosh. You're younger, a cheese fan? You, you go for that? Uh, you know, like, let's let's rank the, the crackers, the cheese crackers. Um, nibs are your sunshine. Like, if you're doing the equivalent, yeah. like, cheese it crackers are equal to, like, if this was an SAT test, Danny, cheese it crackers are to Oreo cookies, right? Like, because they're the name brand, they have the higher quality. Okay. Cheese nibs, N I B S, which is, I believe, is, is Nabisco still a thing? Cheese nibs. They're, Cheese they're, nibs. they're like the sunshine. Like it's the Diet Coke of a real Oreo cookie. <laughs> That's what you feed your kids to save money? No, I, I don't, we don't feed them this anyway. Although Nora, <laughs> my, my sister in law, lovingly took our kids. Like she, she loves our kids. She took our kids to dinner last night. Mm -hmm. And because um, we're going up to Pennsylvania, she got to see them for a little bit. And she took them to this place called Crumble Cookies afterwards for dessert. Oh my God, my daughter loves those. Okay. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I like twelve dollars a cookie. Those we don't. We don't Dallas. give Nora like we, we don't. It's not like we're uh, carrying uh, canvas tote bags, not giving our kids sugar, listening to PBS. But we typically don't give Nora like just pure, pure sugar, right? You know? sure, yes. Yeah. Um, and so, so she come home bouncing off the walls. Oh sweet Jesus! <laughs> oh. I've never seen. I put it. I put part of the video on Twitter this morning. Uh, I've never seen Nora here. I'll show you. Like Nora was ridiculous. I didn't plan on doing this. Nora is out of control. Hold on. Can you? Pop? I'm gonna get my yeah, volume. Yeah, I can give you some. Yeah, give me some sound here. Let me it. see. I, I, Let me <laughs> see. I guess for the audio listeners at home. Yeah, what yeah. Are you looking at you're you're in your living room and a yeah, rocking yeah. chair. Nora's in your. Let lap. me see. I don't know if it's gonna work. This is. I, I'm not 100 percent sure if this, but Nora. I've never heard Nora like this. I, I'll stop. It, it's go to TJ Razor. It's not playing right now for Man, some reason because it's Twitter and Twitter is a we need Elon Musk to get on Twitter right <laughs> somebody's got to fix this oh by the way where is Elon is Hunter where's Elon he hasn't tweeted in a while I have I really don't know I mean I know yeah. after the whole little Twitter deal kind of you know spiraled and fell apart he's kind of been a little bit more absent did you hear that just moving a mile a minute I feel like I is it coming through I don't know. I don't think it's coming through. I can't tell if it's coming through. Your I can't either, not. but she just starts at one point. The sugar gets so bad. She just goes, Rawr! like she can't, <laughs> she can't contain it anymore. She can't, can't handle it. I've never seen, like we've never seen Nora this way. Like she was running laps in the house for 10 minutes straight. It was nuts. I like crumble cookies. Are, I, there must be a level of sugar, sugar in these mean, things. Oh yeah, sure they're, they're, they're big and they're fat and they're full yeah, sugar. They're like oh my gosh, I I, I went and picked up the grand man, and uh, I came home and they were all Remy and Nora were just running, just doing laps in the house, burning burning uh, burn, burn, burning holes in the floor. Okay, disclaimers out of the way. 
people are educated about fast food. They know cookies have sugar. Mm-hmm. We've done our work here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's this. Uh, there's things that are interesting setting up in the world that we can talk about here. And, and one of them for me, uh, let me go back to my, my show notes here. By the way, uh, speaking of show notes, the show notes did not make it, the description did, but the links didn't make it onto the website last week. I will repost these. Um, we will repost these in YouTube uh, and on the website from last week. Yeah, show links are always on YouTube. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Let's, let's get them on the website just in oh, case. No, but no. Uh, screening for stocks, a trading plan, Don's trading class from a uh, lunch and learn that was really good, HR charts uh, that people are, people are interested in the HR charts. So we'll get those links posted up. But, Danny, this is interesting to me. The ruble is the world's strongest currency this year. Russia's ruble? Russia's ruble. Russia's ruble. Russia's ruble. <laughs> like this is, uh, what an abject failure of policy <laughs> that, that we went out in an effort to crush Russia's economy. And, and quite frankly, it appears, and I'm being facetious when I say, you can't crush someone's economy when you continue to buy their oil and steel. And the ingredient, like Airbus, is making huge purchases of their raw materials so they can build planes. This was not a well thought out plan. Like there's no follow up. Like like the, this this war is going to the Ukraine war is going to keep going on. And then I heard uh, on, in passing on the news show, I don't know where, um, Zelensky would like the war to end by uh, winter. Is that how this works? Hey, <laughs> hey, um, you invaded us. I'd like to November fourteenth. Sti- yeah, like it, it's the most ridiculous thing. Like Putin's in the driver's seat here. Like, like what, what sanctions, like what, what Ooh. are people doing? And, and, and the world, I'm going to build a side picture here. That's going to lead to the fed here in a second. And it's like the world's just powerless because they won't, they won't stop buying this dude's oil. Right. And we have ways to fix it here. We can, that's not the show we're doing today. <laughs> All the ways we could fix getting the world hooked off of Russian oil and Hooked on good old. Well, we were off of Russian oil. Well, we were, uh, and we could have helped the world, but that's another show okay. for another day. But right now, the world's powerless, and because they, they can't, they they can't stop. Like one of the causes of inflation, right? Of, of the food inflation. Do you see the food inflation numbers? Right. No. The, just those? ridiculous this morning. So everything's higher. Uh, core personal consumption, right? Uh, Expended rose four point seven percent. Uh, from a year ago, by the way, it's a 40-year high, okay? Uh, 1981 is the last time it was like this. But it's slightly less than expected. If you, <laughs> if you expected 10% and you got 4.7, are you happy? No. Nothing's changed, right? We thought 10, but they didn't think 10. But slightly less than expected. Give me a break. What kind of, what kind of moral victory is that? Like, you didn't win. It's the highest it's been since 1981. This is not a victory for the home team. But we're, we're the, the world right now, in terms of inflation, this is not all Ukraine's fault, okay? This is not the Ukrainian no, war. not at all. This is not all. There, there is policy error left and right here to be cast, you know, cast with blame on the Fed, on the administration, what have you. But Ukraine is a contributing factor, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. And, um, but the world is just helpless, tongue-in-cheek. To, to, if we just stop buying this oil, maybe maybe Putin goes away. He's never been stronger. He's the strongest currency in the world right now, and the world's still buying all his materials. You're not going to get inflation to come down. Just like this country right now is held hostage by the Fed, and and whatever policy po- policy errors they've already made, and now they're trying to course correct. And the problem is the Fed is a blunt force instrument. They're not a scalpel. And so what can, what can the Fed do to get inflation down? Because it can't stop the war in Ukraine, right? No. If Jay Powell could, would he? And if Jay Powell, Jay Powell can't change policy on energy, because that's where people are feeling it, right? Like, I think the sentiment would be a lot better if oil wasn't skyrocketing, right? Mm-hmm. Or, and, and food. And food as well. This is what Jay Powell can do. And this is what came up in the report that people really, really need to pay attention to. And it's this. And it's where, by the way, 
It's where the market turned this week lower, decidedly. Disposable income and inflation-adjusted spending both declined for the month. That little headline there is so incredibly huge. And to the person out there making fun of me saying, well, no kidding, things are expensive. Of course they're going to decline. Before, when people were saying um, spending was up, like you get a spending number, consumer spending's up, and people were all happy. No, because it wasn't inflation adjusted. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Daniel. It's up 10% without doing anything. Yeah, it's not because people were out there buying more. It's because everything costs more. There you go. They're not telling you that on the news. Like, that's not part of the headline. That's not part of the quick tweet that you're reading or, or whatever you're reading or listening to. This is such a big deal. And, and why, would, why is this such a big deal, folks? Because this economy is 70 to 80% a consumer-based economy. We're a service-based economy. We're not an industrial-based economy. Like, China is an industrial-based economy. They want to become service-based like we are, but they're not. And when we pull in the reins on spending, the trickle-down effect is enormous. Everything from large, durable purchases, uh, automobiles, um, uh, washing machines, ovens, that type of stuff, to, um, to going to out to eat, right? Because if you're pulling in the reins, is a uh, Chipotle, uh, a Chipotle burrito, uh, $10 or more worth it? Is any burrito. Make one at home, yeah. Right. And so um, this is, and it doesn't stop on a dime. Now, if you got lower gas prices, lower energy prices, maybe that helps the consumer, but they're not low enough. Like you're just getting 50 or 60 cents off the top. That's not, that's not going to help. This is a very big issue. And let me show you something. And so there was a number that came out. So let me get the SPX up here. Uh, SPX. So the SPX is up here. And um, you see S&Ps are down 1.3% today. Here, let me just tick off the days so you understand what I'm, where I'm getting at here. So here, oh, pardon me. I telling Danny earlier, my bifocals don't focal. <laughs> my eyes are getting worse. I think I'm I was not, in here when you were talking yes, about Yes, yes. Yeah. It's not. Like, I literally am like. Tim doesn't have any focal anymore. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, you know, I think my mom had cataracts, and I'm not being, I, I think she did. And I wonder when that starts. Uh, so here is. Well, the good news is there's a real easy fix. I yeah. Can fix that now. So here is uh, t- here's today, Thursday. We're taping the show Thursday, by the way. I didn't even mention that. Yeah. Doing the show a day early this week. Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. And what came out at uh, 9 a.m. on Tuesday? The revised consumer sentiment from the University of Michigan, like the final yeah. sentiment indicator. Sentiment is one of the things that will trigger algorithmic algorithmic trading to the downside or to the upside, depending upon what the sentiment is. The sentiment came out bad. And like, well, what did you expect? Of course it's going to come out bad. It's because we're a service-based economy that if we pull in the horns, spending-wise, there are huge ramifications everywhere down to the local lunch counter. And you have to understand. Oh, that's how you kill inflation, Tim. You kill demand. That's, that's exactly <laughs> it. On, this is just talk, talk about this for months. This is all. <laughs> now, well, you're seeing it now. Like I know we like like we like now it's coming to fruition. Yes. And that is really important to understand because well, does that mean the cycle's over? Should we start buying equities? And I, and Not I don't. Yet. <laughs> I, I you know you do what you want to do. But we've talked about triggers, like a five, like a weekly five A across the daily. We've talked about triggers in the past, like so you don't have to guess, mm-hmm. you don't have to go off of an economic report that's old. Like we, there, there are physical triggers that you can look at to use, and we cover them in episodes four hundred well, through four. The best, the best leading indicator is the stock market. Yeah, it's the chart. Here's by, by the way, real quick okay. before you go on in inflation, Please. I want to bring this up. So, because I think you're going to see a big a, a bifurcation coming. So there's a a thing called the bullwhip effect, right? And what, what happens is when inflation gets bad, what you were referring to, mm-hmm. people stop spending, and it's more the discretionary items. They have to eat and they have to get gas, right? Right. So those two they can't, but they can pull back on how much they eat out. They can, you know, luxury items, all that kind of stuff. Right. And now you're seeing, tar- you're seeing these big corporations have inventory buildup because people are stopped spending. Therefore, they're having to lower their prices. That's not on the main consumer staples. That's on the 
other items. So you're actually you actually going forward may see a little bit of a, a bifurcation where you might see a little deflation in luxury goods or things you can pass on and wait, but you're still going to have inflation in the food and gas. So here, speaking of luxury items, here's Restoration Hardware. So Gary Friedman, CEO of Restoration Hardware, comes out yesterday and uh, at the end of the day and says, now they reported 28 days ago. Look at this chart, Zach. They reported 28 days ago, and they had already said they saw weakening demand, mm-hmm. that luxury homes were down, like, mm-hmm. and, and it took the stock price down. And you can see uh, here's their earnings, and then it rolls over. So and it's down 10% today. 10% is a big move in the stock. Ooh. And they came out and warned that in the 28 days since they last reported, they are seeing it accelerate now. Right. They, 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 Why do you see home prices go down 10%? Well, hold on. I've got something, I got something here I want to show you that is not good. And it's going to keep Jay Powell on, I think it's going to keep Jay Powell on the rate hike warpath. I'll show it to you in a second. Um, with, with this restoration hardware, though, what's super interesting, I mean, everything is interesting. I, it, it's, it's very relevant to the economy right now. They issued uh, a $2 billion buyback. And if you under, I, want, I want to set this up. So when you have a buyback, what you do, uh, obviously you're trying to reduce your share count, which boosts your, typically boosts your share price because your earnings per share goes up. There's less shares in the market, right? Mm-hmm. But you typically don't want to buy your shares higher. You want to buy them lower. You want to buy them lower because you think there's a value there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so, Restoration Hardware's management team doesn't believe it. they issue. They they have out. They have approved and out the ability to buy back two billion dollars worth of their stock. Since the issuance of that buyback, Danny. They have not bought one share. Think about this. They think the price is going lower. That's exactly it. They haven't bought back one share of an authorized $2 billion buyback. What does Restoration Hardware see? Have people just stopped going into their stores? You're like, Tim, I don't know what that really means. I don't look in the world of buybacks. They got money burning. They got money burning a hole in their. Let pocket. me put it real easy. They know their financials. They know what they're going to release next time. They know yeah. what the next earning report is going to look like, pretty well right now. Yeah. And so if it's going to be ugly, they know there's another leg down. They can buy the stock even cheaper. Yeah. Boy, that is. It, I can't begin to tell you that. That's what I was reading about this uh, last night. Boy, did that catch my attention. Because if it's. Uh, how many other companies feel that way? I haven't heard anyone talk. Like, this is the first time I've heard about it. Like, we're going to come up on earnings season here. Uh, by the middle of the month, we'll have the b- middle, week three, we'll have the big techers reporting, you know, your Apples. Well, Apple's at the end of the month, but your Amazon's. And Amazon. this, is, this is significant. You know, I, restoration hardware doesn't, doesn't make an economy, but. Housing. So interesting. Remember, I've been saying for the last month or two, housing's the next shoe to drop. I want to show you, you talked about bifurcation. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to show you the juxtaposition of two headlines. I get uh, a couple newspapers a day. I still like hard copy newspapers. Mm -hmm. Zach, I'm going to try to do this where people can see the headline. You see that? You read that for audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. DFW home prices on the rise faster than ever. This is just yesterday. Wednesday, the, what was yesterday's date? Mm -hmm. 29th. Mm -hmm. Today's the end of the quarter. Crazy. Oh. Four, four, four out of ten houses in Dallas are sold. Oh, okay. Zach, Zach knows this because Zach's trying to yeah, buy a home. Uh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. National Association of Realtors put out a report in May doing a general analysis of uh, companies buying housing in the country versus individuals or families buying housing. Uh, it just shifts around the country. On average, I think it's 13% of homes in America are sold to companies currently. Uh, in Dallas, four out of ten sold the house and and that's and that's just like dallas county rockwall's nuts oh. terrence nuts probability zach if you Gosh. wait for a few months you'll get it cheaper i hope so i man I'm so because they new, say new that in dallas but the actual buy. turnaround time to sell a home has gotten no, longer now. yeah there's there's nuance it's to this crazy. headline i'm just I, I just need to show you this other headline yeah, yeah. though let me make sure i get it it's the bottom of the page one of the 
Plano mortgage lender slashes staff by 75%. Oh, wow. This isn't just like a mom and pop mortgage lender. This is a nationwide mortgage lender. And so you're like, well, who is it, Tim? First guarantee mortgage laid off uh, an S uh, lender terminated, terminated 428 of its 565 employees that work in its Plano office. So this isn't like, uh, well, uh, it was a five person office and they cut half of them. No, no, no. They just terminated 428 of its 565 employees. So, so fastest home prices, right? And then uh, they, they, there's no work for the mortgage lenders. You think this is limited? have just come to. A you think now. this is limited to just this company? You don't think Rocket Mortgage is affected? You don't think um, Amerisave? Any, any, any of them? Yeah. Right. Ho Loan Depot. This is a big deal. And Real estate prices have already rolled over in other states. It's the price. Yeah. It's it, the prices are still okay in Texas and Florida because that's where people are still going, migrating. But the turnaround selling time has lengthened. So now you're going to start seeing prices come down even here. So Jay Powell can't, in, 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 in some of the metroplexes probably across the country, you still have rising home prices, right? Which is blunt force. There's nuance to that number as you were alluding to. He's not going to get off the warpath of raising rates. He's starting to see results, though, I think, of his demand destruction campaign. And he's not going to stop. Yeah, we're going into, he's pushing us. Yeah, he, we're not going to, and I, this, and this is the problem here. So look at crude oil. Crude oil has come off. And I can, I, there's a part of me that thinks crude oil may have topped. And if crude oil capitulates here, and this is a daily chart of crude oil, there's a part of me that believes crude oil can get down here to the 200 day eventually. And this is, Granted, there are other stronger. Crude oil is down for the quarter, I believe. Hunter, in back, am I right on that? The crude oil is down negative for the quarter? Um, Give me one moment, I'll tell take, you. Take your time. And if, if this is the big sector holding up the market right now, right? And it capitulates. Because, well, crude oil down is great for the consumer. The consumer is going to go out there and spend. The consumer right now is being trained to bring in their, as I showed you earlier in that pull piece. Pull in your talons. Yeah. Pull in your talons and, and save your dollars. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Save your dollars. And convert to rubles. No, I'm yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. It's a great rate. And uh, his strongest currency, more buying power. And um, crude oil here, if it gives up the ghost, they're, 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 I, I think this is, the deflation is, is much, much worse, right? Like the stagflation, like the, right, right. everything costs more and people aren't spending. Mm hmm like like the, the Jimmy Carter years. Late 70s, baby. And, and so, and then, like, let's look at our Bob. Let's look at uh, gasoline futures. Well, they're all saying the numbers are as bad, have, are as bad as since, haven't been as bad since 1981. That's it. Well, the, We're back to that stagflation era. And this quarter is the worst quarter since 1971, or first half. Mm -hmm. The first half of this year mm -hmm. is just as equally bad as the first half of 1971. Mm -hmm. Our Bob. It, and you're looking at this chart, and you're like, Tim, that is a significant blow to our Bob right there, the gasoline futures. You need gas to go down much, much, significantly lower. Oh, yeah. And, and this federal tax holiday that they're proposed, that probably is not even going to ever happen. But on gasoline, it only takes it down 3%. That's not enough. Like, like you, need, you, need, you need gas to go back. Like, for people to feel confident in the economy. One of their, other than food, Daniel, one of the biggest expenditures is gasoline to get to your employer. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is significant. It needs, I think he's seeing demand destruction here. I think he's starting to see people pulling their talons. Maybe they're not going to drive as far. And you're going to say, well, Tim, I see all the airplanes packed. They're canceling flights. There's so much demand. Wait till credit heights. Wait, wait, wait till people can't pay for things. And uh, Hunter, is, is oil down for this? Is energy down for the quarter? Crude oil, it appears, is not. It looks like it started the quarter pretty much around the 100 ish area, a little yeah. bit above. So it's up just a tiny bit for the quarter as of right now, but not much. Gotcha. And what is, what is the, um, the high risk credit ETF? Um, it just, I, I had it written, I didn't write it down, I had it in my mind. Um, H, is it H? HYG. Um, HYG, thank you. 
And yeah. so how can you measure? Well, it's a high yield bond fund. High, yeah, yeah. But it, it, yeah, it, what is this doing? The, the, is there a credit, I don't know about a credit crisis, but is there going to be a credit problem? Well, you got to watch the spreads between uh, investment grade and high yield rate. Yeah, and HYG can give you some kind of proxy to see this, but look, this is a real precarious position the, the economy is in right now. I don't, maybe there is a soft landing to be had, right? Like maybe there's going to be some market rotation that takes place, like oil comes down, gasoline comes down. Like I'm painting you a picture of how I think it could happen. Mm -hmm. And the consumer feels better. And I do think that. I think that you drive by the pump and see $5 gas and you're like, what the hell? That's over 100% from where it was when, when the current administration took over. Ford doesn't make cars. Ford doesn't make cars. Like, there's not many cars on the road. There are these SUVs. Well, they need to go buy electric vehicles. You don't think your electric rates have gone up? You, you think people want to go spend the money on an electric vehicle right now? If you can get one, right? And so um, this, to me, is super interesting. So I, I wonder where the summer is going to end up because, look, um, there was a lot of there's there's been destruction that has nothing to do with the Fed it has everything to do with belief in Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's now down below. Uh, well, it's at nineteen thousand. Someone someone's trying to hold up Bitcoin at nineteen thousand, you know, and um, so the takeaway is the risk is still real high. Don't try to guess the bottom. You got to have rules to figure out how you're going to get back in. Yeah. that's assuming that you got defensive and and have a lot of cash. You didn't write it all the way down. Yeah, and so I mean. Look, we, um, we do things differently here. And uh, I was going to go into a VIX thing. I, what I'm going to tell people is there's a new way I think you can look at the VIX to shorter, to find where the bounces may be, okay? But again, what is this show, Daniel, for? Edification purposes only. So if you want to see a new way to use VIX, because I, I have a question to ask you, Danny. If you want to see a new way to use the VIX, I think it's a newer way for this particular market, okay? I cover it in Wednesday's video. It's how I'm looking at the VIX right now, the cash VIX, not the VIX futures, cash VIX. Um, and so you just go stocks will sink lower, and I cover it towards the front end of the video, okay? But now, I think this is this long weekend, right? Saturday, because Monday is going to be a, a market oh, holiday because July 4th. By the way, what an amazing country we live in. Right, eh, it's got problems sometimes, right? But um, the fact that we can talk markets, and we, you know, tongue in cheek, is the market rigged? Is algorithmic trading? This is one of the freest places on earth to do what we do. To become, we're an ownership society. To own a piece of an Apple, to own a piece of an Amazon, to to own a piece. And look, I, you, you we're not buying holders. But what a celebration of freedom it is that you could in th a thousand dollars invested ten years ago in Tesla could now be worth a hundred and ten thousand. That a thousand dollars ten years ago that invested in Netflix, Netflix with all its troubles, right? That a thousand dollars invested in pizza could be worth fourteen thousand. What a fabulous country we live in. That. You, we can do what we do, we can earn what we earn, and we can try to participate in what is known as the American dream. I, I think it's absolutely fabulous and something to be celebrated. And so, but some of you are a little singed, you're seething, because you, um, your parents, look, and, and I, I told the story last week, I finally got a letter from someone who, in why missing Pennsylvania got burned by the same stock, my in the, not the same broker, but similar situation. Um, and you have these advisors that aren't doing any advising. They're just telling you stay the course and you're losing money and you're losing your retirement. And like, like not just in drips and drabs, but in integers. 
you know, and there's like three or four questions I think that are crucial. You should call the person who, who you seek advice from this weekend. And, and by the way, we answer the phones on the weekends. I don't expect them to answer the phone on 4th of July, but send them a note. And Danny's got like three or four questions I, I've heard him uh, say over the phone to people over the years. That I think are crucial. They're fair questions. They're not gotcha questions. You're not going to get anybody here. You're looking, you're looking to save your, your, wealth, like your wealth right now. Mm-hmm. And there's a way to do that tactfully that can get you to the heart of the matter to let you know if the person that you have working for you is actually working for you or working against you. And go ahead, Danny. Do you have- well, the first thing you want to ask, number one, is are you fiduciary? Are, are you my Explain fiduciary? That, do you only represent me or do you work on commission? If the answer is no, there's conflicts of interest. doesn't mean a broker can't do a good job. It's just life's too short and I don't want to have to look over my shoulder and wonder why he's recommending that. Is it because it's his anniversary and he wants to buy his wife something nice? Or is it really representing me? So I, I just don't like that s- system. You want to be set up the same way. Pause. If, pause. Uh, 12v1 fees fall into this, what Danny's talking about. Hey, well, any type of commission. Yeah, trailer yeah, like, commission. Like if you've yeah. got a mutual yeah. fund in your account. Yeah, yeah. But even so, even yeah. the loaded commission type products, 12v1 fees is a quote marketing and advertising trailer after you sell the fund. Right. Okay. And, and they're coming under attack right now. So they're really, a lot of the brokers now are actually trying to shy away from 12B1 fees because they've gotten such a bad name. But there's still commissions. There's still high, higher fees. So let me ask you. So when if you're going to buy a mutual fund, we don't like mutual funds. We only do them in 401ks where you don't have a choice. Right. But if you've got an option, we use ETFs and individual stocks. But on a mutual fund, you really want the institutional share because that's going to be normally the lowest share. Well, in the best interest rule, meaning... You think best interest means is it your in best interest? No, is it in the broker's best interest? As long as it's suitable for you. So if it's a aggr- if you're aggressive and it's a small cap aggressive fund, they can put you in the most expensive share class and still meet the best interest rule, but it's not the 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 best share class for you. So number one, are they fiduciary? If no, I would consider other alternatives because there's right. conflict of interest. If the answer is yes, move down to question two: Do you have a sell discipline? Because you could be a fiduciary. You can charge on a assets under management and not have conflicts of interest, but you can still do low uh, institutional mutual fund share classes and still get that buy and hope pie chart. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, um, so that's the next thing is, do you have a buy and sell discipline? And if so, what is it? it you got to make sure it makes sense. You got to make sure those things make sense. I'd start with those two. I've got a whole bunch yeah. more they can reach out. And, and here's me. the thing. There's so much plausible deniability in this industry where they, they'll blame the money manager, like the mutual fund manager, the ETF person. They'll sick blame it. It could be worse. You'd be like Kathy Woods. Well, yeah, yeah. So they'll, they'll give you a, a, a pie chart of, of, of five, six mutual funds. And then for your annual review, you'll go and say, well, this dumb fund didn't do. Oh, yeah, that, that didn't. We're not happy with that manager. We're going to switch him out. We're going to put this other guy who's been doing well. That way, it's not on him. It wasn't his fault. Right. Well, my question is, well, but weren't you monitoring him all through the year? Once he started declining and not doing well, why did you write it down 20%? Why wasn't it sold once it hit a 7 or 8% mark? That's the question. Yeah, and, and episode 400 of, this, of the podcast really goes into this, where right. people have sent us in communications, and we had one person showing our videos to his advisor and and that that right right yeah it puts him on the back foot and look you're, we're not looking to attack anyone here but they're you shouldn't continuously buying coinbase which is down 10% like like you know how many of you still own this right like in, in some account it's now down 5 but it was down 10% earlier like this is this is destruction and you're like well of course bitcoin's down yeah but how many of you still own this? You're like, well, I don't own it individually. Check your mutual fund. There's, there's, so many, there's so many more mutual funds, ETFs, products that have, there's so much duplication because there's not enough stocks. I mean, how many? How many yeah, st- there's more mutual funds than you can put stocks in them. Yeah, look at this Robin Hood. I mean, just un- unbelievable. So anyway, I think it's, this is the weekend to get a hold of this. And this is the weekend to, Oh my gosh, I feel a corny pun coming on. Uh, declare your independence. 
Good one. Yeah, declare your independence. Oh, you're gonna that's gonna make the show notes. Declare I think so. Declare your independence from this nonsensical buy and hold, stay the course. If you saw a tornado in front of you, why do you keep driving to it? Uh, and we're not doom and gloomers. Like we're we're not. We're but we, Kathy Wood has unlimited assets, apparently, to keep buying the dip on everything. <laughs> you, my friends, do not. And when you sell at 5%, whatever your limit is, right? When, it, when you sell, you limit the destruction to the downside, and it allows you the opportunity to start from a higher base. And over the course of investing, it doesn't matter how old you are, that compounding from a higher base it pays huge dividend results. Well, not only that, it makes it easier to stay the course because you're not freaking out. You, you sleep went down, you can sleep. Yeah, yeah, five, six, eight, ten percent, not twenty, thirty, thirty-five. Yeah, it's a huge deal. And so, look, that's a lot for for a Thursday show, but there's clues in here as to what's happening. I think, and um, although I do think that this turns around, if if, if you can get energy under. Every day, people don't go to the supermarket to shop for steak, okay? But every day- Speak for yourself, Tim. <laughs> but, every, but every day, most people drive by a gasoline station and see the sign, and it's done nothing but go up. If you see that coming down, and a lot of our country is built on the way you feel, and if we feel like we've got more money in our pockets, you'll go back out and spend. But that's not going to happen overnight. That's, you think gas prices are going to get cut in half in the, in, in the span of a month? I don't think- and it goes back to what I was starting with earlier, because the why would Putin change course? Dude is ruling the world right now, because the sanctions haven't worked. Well, but also it's off the front page anymore because the people, the American people, kind of got tired of that story. Don't care as much. Their short-term expansion span. So the politicians have moved off of it. They realize they do polls. They realize yeah. the American public is more worried about their checkbook, right. their pocketbook, and inflation than Ukraine. So now Ukraine is not an issue. Sure. So I mean, I hate to say it, but that's yeah. And so well, let's um, get to the market. Yeah, I was going to say I'll, I'll go with Hunter, and then we'll uh, let Don uh, prep. But Hunter's got the video tonight. It's Thursday. It's Thursday morning. It is. So um, Hunter's got the video tonight, but Hunter's also got to watch the stocks. And so let's talk, Hunter. Yes, sir. So we're actually going to talk. A a little bit about SPY and QQ. We're going to go back and look at some of those key fit. I think it's worth talking about again. And we're going to look at some medical stocks. So we're going to start with the medical stocks. Okay. And the reason we're going to look at these is over the course of the last few days, a lot of stocks have broken down along with the market a little bit. But these three stocks in particular have spectacularly well. The first name here is Tell you L. What, let's Eli pause Lilly. A second. Just pause one second, Mr. Hunter. Yeah. Um, are you hearing the... Yeah, he's the, breaking up a little bit. All right, we'll just give it a little second to catch the lag up. Uh, what do you think, Zach? Is that... Uh, yeah, just something over here. Uh, Hunter, go ahead and start. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. About Eli Lilly? Any better? Or... Yeah, it's still a little chunky. Hmm, I'll tell all you right. what. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll try and talk very little or slow if that helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's try Let's try let's it. stick yeah. with the charts. You yeah. got it, man. We'll go E-L, uh, E-L, E-Y... What's Eli Lilly? E L L Y. E L Y. Thank you. L L Y. L L Y. Thank you. There we go. Appreciate that. All right. So just a nice, nice flag here up at new highs, pretty much. As you can see, it's kind of respecting the previous highs, which is call it roughly 315 to 320. Uh, and all of these charts are going to be similar in the article slash healthcare space as well. So LLY is the first one. UTHR is the second one. And they all look, again, very similar. Uh, UTHR, United Therapeutics. Nice flag here, respecting the ADMA, at least for now. Big time relative strength for the last couple of years as well. And then the last one, VRTX. These are some of the strongest stocks in the market right now. VRTX is a little bit volatile, um, probably maybe a little more so than the others. But same kind of thing, respecting the eight day for now, pulled back off of the, the uh, breakout and go new highs. 
92 pit, uh, but kind of holding up around 280, possibly flipping that to resist or to support. So three medical stocks, three healthcare names that are looking pretty good, uh, really good compared to the market, very close to their their year to date highs. Uh, whereas you got the market's very year to date. So that is the purest mission of relevance you can ask for. So three medical stocks. Are you guys still hearing me okay or am I breaking? Yeah, that you're, you're okay. You're okay. Keep okay. going. Okay, so next, I'll be quick here. So I want to mention these bibs that we talked about. So on QQQ, Tim, if you pull that up, sure, man. I know we've mentioned this a time or two for the course of the last few weeks. But that's hey, one. Your charts are, are extreme. Can you guys hear me? Your charts are extremely blurry on, on mine. Yeah, they are. What, what do I, they I look like to you, Hunter? Just be me, though. They're blurry. Uh, I, thought, I thought it might just be me. So I'm thinking we might have just some issues at the studio today because you guys are a little chunky uh but it looks great on our end yeah it looks good on our end. i was gonna say super <laughs> super quick uh <laughs> yeah. yeah i wonder if there's some oh, gremlins right. in yeah. the system somebody's gotta call well, the internet company yeah well, i'm I, looking at i'm looking at it on my end so i'll just i'm just going right along with you okay so, i appreciate that yeah so the 358 or 258.05 excuse me this is that 6.8 percent retracement that is important to watch if the lows are broken. Now, right now, the markets are staging one hell of a reversal off the bottom. Uh, QQQ was down over 3% or right around 3% at the lows, now down less than 1%. So we got time B shape recovery on interests right now. But the question is, how do we close? Um, and are we able to get back over some key levels of resistance, some key moving averages that are now hooking back down, that kind of thing? But nonetheless, if these recent lows are broken, you're going to want to keep an eye on those. So that's 2.8.0 on QQQ. On SPY, the 50% retracement, and this is from the COVID low to the recent high, 50% retracement is 349.12. So same, you're going to want to watch both of those levels if the lows are broken. And additionally, I know my son have talked about it extensively in the videos. The extension from the 50-day moving average is also something to pay attention to. So uh, that 50-day moving average continues to move down pretty sharply. If, for example, we were to break our recent lows and go down towards those fibs in, say, the next week or two, it's likely that we would be stretched to the downside, uh, you know, kind of as we have been on the Qs and the S&P while reaching those levels. So something very important to keep in mind, the Kind of the, the exhaustion extension on the Qs has been around 13% or so below the 50. On the S&P, I call it 11%. Um, I believe we said 6 to 7 below the 50 on both of those. So just something to keep in mind, the extension from the 50-day moving average on the downside, as well as those FIBs, especially if they were to uh, possibly line up. Secondly, just because we're kind of falling back or uh, pulling back here, 21 EMA a couple of days so great right uh keep in mind that in March Tim if you can pull up or I, I can't see the chart extremely well on your end but just take a look at QQQ or SPY in the middle of March mm -hmm. we had a very similar type of setup where we ran up into the 21 EMA after making new lows and and ultimately and came back but we just danced around the lows and all didn't follow through to the downside uh and then had a ripper of a rally on QQQ from 317 up to 371 in about two weeks worth of trading. So just keep in mind, if we press down near these lows on the Q's and P, the other indices, there is not really selling pressure uh, able to push it through down to the downside to those new lows. Uh, keep in mind that it, a, a really sharp rally could come, just like what we saw in March, where we were very close to breaking down, but we ultimately did not and then had a, a really sharp rally afterwards. So just keep that in mind. If we get these lows and we aren't able to lower, it, it's very, very possible that you could have a sharp rally. So that's what I got today. Those three healthcare stocks, big, big time relative strength, very constructive looking charts, especially compared to pretty much, you know, 99% of other stock charts out there. Those key fibs, 250.04 QQQ, 49.2 on Y. So that's what I got today, man. That's it. Awesome. Hey, I'll tell you what, if uh, anyone, I don't know if that'll make the, the, it's real choppy. A little bit choppy. Just make sure you go over it on the video tonight. I was going to say, go over that over on the video tonight. Uh, if you missed 
any of that or you fast forwarded it because it got a little uh, choppy for you, all you have to do is go to revereasset.com, go to tomorrow's insights as I'm guiding you through right now uh, on the video. And then you will see Hunter's video will be right here in the left top left hand corner position and it'll be the current video and he'll cover everything he just did um, tonight on the podcast. Uh, we well, did on the podcast on the video too. All right, Don, you're up. I hope, uh, am I choppy too? No, no, you're, no you're crystal clear. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to add to the conversation that you guys had before about who advisors blame. I, uh, I saw a, a pie chart, a couple pie chart index hold buy and hold guys on Twitter last night talking about don't watch CNBC. They're bad for you. And my response was, I, I agree with you. Don't watch CNBC, but what do you guys say to people that are getting close to retirement? Or what would you have said to people that were approaching retirement in 2000 to 2002 and 2007, 2009 and watch the market go down 50%? And their typical canned bullshit answer is, well, that's the risk tolerance that they provided to their advisor. So now you've got somebody that you're paying to manage your money, pointing the finger back at you and telling you, well, this is the risk that you told us that you were comfortable with. And this just recently happened with somebody that uh, we got as a client that came over from a pie chart place. He was he was ninety five percent in equities when we looked at him, and I said you're you're kind of close to retirement, uh, and they're they're a pie chart advisor. I'm a little surprised to see you ninety five percent in equities. And they told me, and his response was, well, they told me uh, I told them the goal that I wanted to reach, and they said I needed to take on a lot of risk in order to get there. That's just brutal advice. You take on more risk to accomplish your goals, but if the market starts going lower. That risk that they told you to take on is going to destroy your account, and they're going to turn around and blame you for telling them that you wanted to be risk to be more your portfolio to be more risky. Absolutely zero risk control, risk management, and absolutely zero uh, taking responsibility for what your the service that you're providing to your supposed client. It's just outrageous outrageous. And Dan, this is one of the, the I, I kind of knew this, but you crystallize it very well when I first came on. And you said, what we have to make people understand is that it's not their risk tolerance. And we go through an entire risk tolerance questionnaire when we, when we uh, bring clients on board, because we have to. But the risk is not with the individual. The risk is with the market. You, you said that right from the very beginning. It's a line that I say all the time. And we've identified when risk is high, and that's under the 200-day moving average on the major indexes. No severe bull market happens without the indexes breaking below their 200-day moving average. And on average, from the high to that break is a 12% drawdown. A 12% drawdown is very easy to come back from as long as you stick to that rule. The, pro the problem is pie chart advisors don't stick to that rule. They'll tell you to think long term. They'll tell you this is your risk tolerance. This is what you told us to do. They'll say, ah, I don't know. I think maybe we're close to the lows. You know, we just saw some data where uh, inflation might be lessening. So we, we might be close to this. They have no idea. They have absolutely no idea where the lows are. They had no idea in 2000 to 2002. They had no idea from 2007 to 2009. They had no idea during COVID and they have no idea now. The market will stop going down when it wants to stop going down, and you have to use technical analysis in order to identify those points, and a salesperson will not give you that knowledge. It's outrageous that they will turn around, and these guys on Twitter with all their big follows, preaching index funds and buy and hold and think long term are perfectly okay with you losing 50% of your money because they, they'll tell you, well, that was the risk profile you gave to us. We're just going by what you told us. I would give a gigantic middle phone finger to those people if I was phone approaching finger. retirement and that was the response that I got from them. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Woo. That's why you do it. 
do you have anything else you'd like to cover or was that uh was that it the the, the 20 uh hunter talked about his levels and uh and he'll go over them again but a big level broke overnight a uh, wednesday night into thursday that was the 3800 level uh we went down to the next uh, level around 3750 and bounced there. We took half of our short off there. So we went from 20% net short against the S&P 500 to 10% uh, net short. Our, our accounts are green on the day while the markets are red. They're trending below all of their declining moving averages. For all we know, the bottom is in today. We don't predict, but we do know when risk is high. And when you're below all the moving averages, risk is high. This, what, this is an, a, a, a reasonable time for a bounce because it's the third day down after a big negative reversal. It's a very reasonable spot for a bounce between this 3700 and 3750 area. Uh, but the next uh, level down to break 3700 is a big area too because that was uh, where those two big gap down days were and that was on uh, June 16th and 17th. We got back above that. Uh, after the holiday on 621 and then we rallied a little bit right into where we failed and I detailed all that in Tuesday's video uh, when we failed actually it was Monday's video when we failed uh, Hunter talked about the reversal um, actually no that was my video Hunter's was Monday the 27th I'll be okay I did the 28th video and I talked about how we got long and then got short because our, our signal changed what, what do you do when you get new information you better change your mind it's okay to be wrong it's not okay to stay wrong. Uh, we cut our losses small. We're still positive for this period of when we went to cash last and um, took some profits in our inverse ETF today, SDS. And uh, we can add that back if we get back up to 3,800 and fail. We rallied so far back up to 3,791. We're at 3,785 right now. 3,800 is a big area. When resistance breaks, or sorry, when support breaks, it turns into resistance. So when you go back up and revisit that level, the big area being 3,800 that broke overnight, we go back up and test that and you fail there, uh, that's, that's giving you more information that the market's weak. If you go back above 3,800 easily, that's telling you that there was a false breakdown and for now, the, the, the short-term low would be in. That short-term low would be today's low, 3739. If we get back above 3800, so broken support turns into resistance. If we can get back up through that, it's a false breakdown. Uh, so 3800, a very key area to pay attention to. And I'll have the 2121 list is holding up remarkably well. Only three of the 21 from the prior week are below their 21. So there are pockets of strength in the market. Um, but we know when risk is high, we know when to not be a hero. And now is the time to not be a hero. All right. Uh, Again, as always, if, if things change, we'll change. Okay. So I'll tell you what, Daniel. Um, let's do the short outro. Can you do it? <laughs> Folks, listen. I love that quote from Don about the traditional advisor brotherhood. Give him the middle foam finger. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. That's classic. <laughs> Folks, listen, have a great July 4th, three-day holiday weekend. Remember, July 4th, that's the reason we live in the greatest country the world's ever known. Um, tell them, please, if you like what you heard, tell a friend, tell a neighbor, just tell them, send them to revereasset.com. They can hit the subscribe button in the top right, and that'll deliver this podcast weekly when it's done. And it'll also give us, send them their, our daily market insight video we do every night the market's open and we won't spam them or hassle them anyway it's up to them to reach out to us and let us know that they'd like a complimentary portfolio review or would just like a topic discussed on this show you can reach out to us any of us at dan at revereasset.com tim hunter or don at revereasset.com and you can always call us old school at 855 real wealth all right, one last thing here before, uh, before we take a sojourn into the uh, long 4th of July uh, holiday weekend. If you missed Don's bear market survival uh, secrets, um, it's hanging on our website. It'll also be, uh, I believe it's in the show notes as well for this week. So uh, it's about an hour long, uh, well worth your time. and Really uh, good. Yeah, and uh, it'll give you some insights into how, how Don and Hunter construct the portfolios and, and what they do to protect uh, the clients over here.
Oops. clients will be getting their uh, their quarter quarterly video uh, over the weekend or quarterly early review next week also. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right, folks. Listen. Have a safe and happy July Fourth, and we'll talk to you next week on your money. Barring any extrogenous events. <laughs> <laughs>